Hi, in this follow-up tutorial, we'll talk about how to program a client for the TCP Eco server, which we'd constructed previously. So uh, this is a very simple Eco client. What it does is it takes an IP and a port as input, and then connects uh, to the TCP Eco server, which we'd made previously, listening on that IP and port, and sends various strings which the user inputs from std in and then displays what the server sends back as well so putting it in a more concise and algorithmic manner the client connects to the remote tcp eco server on the ip and port mentioned through command line then it requests the user to input various strings once the user inputs a string it goes and sends it to the eco server on the other side the eco server echoes back whatever the client sent the client displays that to the user so now let's quickly look at the code first we have all the includes similar to the server process we've defined the input output buffer to be 1024 this is basically used to store what the user inputs and send it to the server receive from the server etc so this is the main loop here remote underscore server is a data structure of type soc addr underscore in this basically contains the ip address and the port number of the remote tcp eco server we want to connect to soc is a socket descriptor which is used to connect to the remote server input <laughs> is basically the user input being stored in this buffer the output buffer is basically what is sent from the remote server so now moving on first we construct a TCP socket to connect to the remote server this chunk of code discuss this in the previous example as well now we go ahead and fill all the remote server details in the soc addr underscore in structure so as we can see that arg v1 corresponds to the IP in ASCII form which we can uh, which we convert into the network byte order form using inet underscore addr also arg v2 is the remote server port number which we convert to integer by using a to i or ASCII to integer and which we further convert to network byte order by using h tones or host to network short now once this step has done the client part is very simple we just have to issue a connect so client consists of basically four calls a socket call to get the socket a connect call to connect to the remote server and then a set of sends and receives to send and receive data from the server side so once again back to connect connect arguments are very simple it's the socket which we created previously then the remote server particulars in the soc addr underscore in structure which we had and then we check if connect succeeded if connect did not succeed then go ahead debug it if it did then we move on to the next step and this is the main loop so while one uh, once again we require better signal handling here so that the client can exit more gracefully but as this is a very is this example is supposed to be very simple so let's keep it this way so now what we do is once we are connected to the remote server we issue an f gets to get some input from the user Basically what we want is a line which the user will input from the console and then we would send that line as is to the remote server. Now as the remote server is an eco server as in the previous uh, example and video which we discussed so it's going to send back the same input string back to us. Right so just after the send call we go ahead and make a receive call. And whatever we get in this receive call we display to the user. This in all probability if the eco server and our client is working fine should be the stream string which was input. Now once again as in the previous example the last byte plus one which actually was sent by the remote server is nulled so that we can print the whole uh, character array in a string form comfortably without having any crashes. Then we go ahead close the socket of course we don't reach to this stage. Uh, this part in the code because of the fact that we are using a dumb while one loop so we'll have to press a control C which is going to exit the program from here itself 
so now let's try and compile this program so basically it compiles well so we should have included uh, string dot h so we can actually do that so not much of a work So now the warning disappears. Now what we will do is let us open another terminal and run our TCP server listening to port number 10,000. This is the TCP eco server which we created in the previous example. So now the server process is listening. Just to make sure it is listening actually we do an at start minus ATN and confirm that it is in the listen state. Now we go ahead and we run the client we have to give the IP address in which case it is 127.0.0.1 because it's on the local host and then the port number on which the server is listing which we have seen is 10,000 so now actually we are connected so as we can see on the server console new client connected to port number whatever so now we send out a hi and we see that the server has echoed back with a hi and the sent message on the server is hi so hello world see that the server sends back very bad spelling mistake though so all the smileys once we are done uh, with playing along with this we can just press a control c to exit At that point the server process is clever enough to figure out that the client has disconnected you can go ahead once again, connect, you know, send across a couple of other strings, and once again, disconnect. So, as we have seen, that this is a very simple case of a TCP client. The client can be very complicated as well, depending upon what sort of a parsing is to be done, what is the protocol the server speaks, and whatnot. But I would say that the client program which we have currently seen is like the very basic building block of any client program network client program so to summarize we have a socket call in the beginning then we have a connect call and then we have a series of sends and receives for the data so client is much simpler to construct in comparison to a server process so with this uh, we come to the end of this tutorial and I hope you've understood this concept properly it is advisable that you try running the code and even try writing your own client without looking at the sample code and sample server code and practice because practice is what makes a man perfect and definitely uh, socket programming is no different thank you